It's tabletop time. I'm Dave. And I'm Murray. And today I want to share with you my trader guard, my entire army, everything I've built across many, many years, and share with you a whole bunch of models that have never been shown on YouTube. And I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of Age of Sigma stuff that is no longer going to be available. Yes, Games Workshop have culled the range, but before we can talk about things, I need a coffee. That's awesome. Okay, I wanted to share about my Trader Guard. Uh, I was so excited when I went to Adepticon and heard a bunch of positive feedback. I didn't think these would resonate with you as much as they did, but almost everyone who took the time to come and say hi to me mentioned my Trader Guard. So I thought it would be a really good idea to share the journey, show off all the models and tell you about what got us to where we are today. You get me anything? This portion of the video is sponsored by Marvel Strike Force. If you'd like to assemble your heroes in this action-packed mobile game, check out the link in the description or on the QR code and let them know we sent you. So for those who don't know, the Trader Guard stem back to, well, the Lost and the Damned Codex, and then Forge World did the Badab War, and we got a bunch of Trader Guard models and the mm -hmm. Renegades and Heretics in Forge World. And that's where I started. I always found the models looked amazing and I wanted to do something with them. So I picked up a whole bunch of resin, I think around the end of 5th or start of 6th edition, roughly when all that came out. And with those, I thought, mm, what can I do? Uh, not much. Because <laughs> <laughs> that particular era, they kind of got squatted for like a full edition. That all changed when 6th edition came out and we had the new box that had Chaos Space Marines and we had cultists. So I had mm. all these really cool models to create some cultists with. But then I decided to expand that into some Trader Guard at the start of 7th edition. And that's where this army really kicked off. We got that awesome book that was a Forge World supplement that redid all the rules for Lost and the Damned. And I started to make some custom models. So these are the earliest models I ever made and their original paint scheme. And they were kind of an independent thing. Uh, they were painted in all these dim dark greys on an ash planet. Because of course I had to be really serious. And I was like, well, if they're on an ash world, they're gonna have camo that matches the color of the planet. <laughs> No outlandish colors, and the idea was they just had some brown accents and brass accents to look really rudimentary and really militaristic. And I was kit bashing uh, basically those Forge World parts with the Chaos Cultists, and they were a clip together sprue from the 6th edition launch box. We didn't have a custom kit then. And I've got a fair few more of these. I think I made about 20 of them, and the rest of them are on display in my shop. But I also have a little mortar here. <laughs> Uh, so I bought the Mortar crew. Well, this is actually a Victoria Minis bit. Oh, is it? And there was a big Kickstarter. Uh, Reaper Bones did a Kickstarter and I backed $1 on that Kickstarter so I could add the add-on pledge <laughs> of three of these huge artilleries because uh, Earthshaker carriages were a whole thing back then and I really like the idea of using Renegade Guard as like an allied detachment to my uh, Chaos Space Marines. And what did Chaos suck at by then? shooting. So it was really to get access to like shooting and tanks and the idea of this like artillery brigade that was behind the lines giving supporting fire to my Alpha Legion. So that's where I painted these up. I love that this one's called Shelly. They all have silly names. <laughs> I love it. Correct me if I'm wrong, did the Death Corps Krieg stuff exist at this point? Ye yes, it was. There was the Elysian Drop Troopers, Talon Desert Raiders, Renegades and Heretics. They all got released and they had models in Forge World, but then Death Corps like kept getting supported, but mm. the others didn't. Just enough that we all kind of hoped, you know, that the next release would be Elysian Drop Troops or Renegades and Heretics, and it wasn't. Yeah, and all their stuff had sort of like the World War One like carriage wheels on it, so it's so yes. tangentially close to what you probably wanted. You were just like, come on. <laughs> and you could use it. So a lot of the, the Death Corps like artillery and stuff you mm. were allowed to use for the other factions. Uh, however, it was ridiculously expensive. So I got these awesome um, Vic Minis uh, sort of designed artillery, put some Renegade etched brass on them, and that was the core of my artillery core. And really the start of the whole trader guard thing. And about the time this was all kicking off, 8th edition came out and squatted everything. So <laughs> the Renegades and Heretics were dead. Uh, they got like one of those sort of PDF supplements 
uh, but it was it was basically nothing if I'm gonna be honest it was basically unplayable terrible uh, so for eighth edition we effectively had nothing but that's what I recycled a little bit and I elevated and that's when I made some of these cultists most of these are just the chaos cultists kit the reason I'm including them is they went on to kind of inspire what my traitor guard army is today they they started to include these teal shawls for their alpha legion uh, mm. alliance uh, some weird wacky models this this was a model from twisted <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> Do you like this guy? Yeah, a little, 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 little sniper. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is this is a little warfan uh, who that's affectionately named my warfan on the tabletop. Uh, the trader guard basically going, well, your parents are dead. You either fight or, well, you become food or something grim <laughs> and horrible like that. So I saw this model at a con. This was actually at PAX and I loved it. And I converted it to have a lass rifle. It was holding a gun. Mm. Uh, it's basically one of the Dickensian orphans like from Oliver Twist. Oh, um, okay. But, and they're like the, they're really scrappy and they fight against the authoritarian government. In the game Twisted, check it out, it's really cool. But yeah, it was pretty much perfect for my traders. Uh, I just added a last rifle instead of his rickety yeah, it rifle. Fits, it fits really well to the point where I had to sort of think for a second, like, I don't think that goes with that kit. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, and that really is the start of where conversion became a huge part of this army. So for me, it's really important for every model to be unique. I don't know what it is, but I hate duplicates, like the same pose in my army. Yeah, and you're using basically the push fit model, so you're going to have at least two per kit. Yes, yeah, and that trend continues with Games Workshop. But thankfully, uh, I love kit bashing, so I was cutting, chopping, changing. Even things like this, um, this commissar, like the sergeant for that squad, that's a custom helmet. That's uh, a separate bit that is put on. And the uh, the gas mask going around to the backpack. Because in my lore, they're on an ash world. So you'll notice that every single one of my cultists had like a respirator because yeah, you can't okay. breathe outside properly. Thanks. It's, it's grim. The point of it is to be depressing. They live on a planet that is so miserable that being annihilated by the Imperium is a worthwhile risk to join Chaos because things are so bad. But really, this was basically a melting pot where I had all the ingredients that I needed and Blackstone Fortress came out. So I don't know if you remember Blackstone Fortress, but it was the first time we got a sniff of Trader Guard. We got plastic Trader Guard. Yep. I was over the moon. I don't think I've ever been more excited in Warhammer than when Blackstone Fortress came out, because as far as I was concerned, this was the start of Trader Guard becoming an army in Warhammer. Yeah, I remember that, because we just had the uh, starter set that had Chaos uh, Shadow Spear, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So you had the new Chaos Chosen, and then you had some Chaos Champions that were in Blackstone Fortress. So it was slightly before then. So was it? Yeah, so the first models we ever got that were the new scale Chaos Space Marines were the two Chaos Space Marines in Blackstone Fortress. Oh, the other way, okay. And they were the only thing that got expanded. But I was sure, I'm like, hmm. in the age of digital sculpting, Games Workshop, can, they, they can easily reuse these assets and make it an army. We had Trader Guard, Negavolt Cultists. We had the um, Beastmen. Lo and behold, they would all go on, except the, the Cultists, to get their own kits as kill teams, but this was like five years ago and I thought we were getting Trader Guard. We didn't, sort of. <laughs> now, in that era, uh, I was sort of getting excited. We had some new models. We had these awesome, I don't know where they are, these awesome and still unpainted uh, psychers. So I spent a whole lot of time in this era debating, do I collect Trader Guard, which basically suck with this addendum PDF that you can't really use? Um, or do I play them as Astra Militarum? And I kept being like, ah, but then they're surely going to release Trader Guard and then I'm gonna regret making this Astra Militarum army where like half the stuff I can't use. Neither happened. And in fact, by the time we got to ninth edition, they finally released things like kill teams. We got the blooded kill team. And that's where on the channel, I started playing with the idea of customizing them. It was actually when the new Cadians came out. Mm -hmm. So. Finally, we have this environment where Chaos Space Marines have enough units in their book that I can kind of field Trader Guard. You can use Warhammer Legends PDF. That's when I started making some of this. So on the channel, we've already seen the very first conversions. Uh, we, I did my command squad, and this is my commander that I painted up. Yeah, they stand out so much more than the, the ones that basically came out of the box. You, you gave them so much personality, and it's exactly what would be awesome to see Games Workshop 
make. Yeah, please do it, Games Workshop. <laughs> that is not all I have done. So you've seen the, the tank. I did the tank on the channel. This is my Trader Guard Lehman Russ converted from Solar Auxilla. Uh, we've got my artillery. I hadn't shown off this artillery. So one thing I love about this is there's an old discontinued kit of Forge World models, these Renegade Guard artillery crew. And I had them, but no reason to use them mm -hmm. because Earthshaker carriages, you basically can't use anymore. Um, but these new heavy field guns, you can. So I've made this up. I've converted them all into like a trench works now. Started to incorporate the idea of trench works being part of my army, uh, which has honestly opened the door to basing. I think my bases look so much better with like the timber on the ground and the mud and the sandbags. Yeah, that was basically the idea is to start incorporating that to the army, make them look like they're in this like battle midway through the battle. And it's a great opportunity to use these these old Renegade kits, which are like now pretty rare. Yeah, I don't think that even I had seen this one that you'd built. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's been sitting at home. I've been slowly working at that on yeah. the side. I have to put some chaos -y conversions on the gun, but yeah, yeah it's coming along. And uh, the thing that's kind of interesting is I made that commitment to just collect an Astra Militarum army. So that's what I'm doing now, obviously, with the Lehman Russ. If Chaos Trader Guard gets a release, I'm sure I can use models for that, but it's, it's fine. I'm just doing Astra Militarum. I don't know if they're ever going to support Trader Guard. Please do, Games Workshop. They're so cool. But I also made up a bunch of squads. So down here, oh, here we have the only finished painted infantry squad. Hey. So it's a fully painted squad. Um, they're mostly the ones I did on the channel, but then I finished painting them. But here we have conversions and for some reason an Alpha Legionnaire from my Horus Heresy army. I really like this one. So, uh, you can, you know how you can combine squads in 10th edition? Yes. You can do like, <laughs> but, but like you just duplicate everything. That means squads have two sergeants, which makes no sense. So I decided that the second sergeant in a 20 man squad, I made him like the enforcer. Mm. So there's this weedy little sergeant who's kind of like, uh, the moral leader of the squad. And then there's this enforcer who's got a bolter, a, like a Tempesta Siren Helmet. And then I gave him, uh, I think it's a Sister of Silence sword, but it looks like a big Zweihander in his hands. So he's just got this like claymore on his back and a bolter. And I imagine him this silent enforcer who just like brutally cuts down anyone who doesn't do what they're told. Yeah, I remember when that uh, got announced and we both thought that's silly. And then we thought, oh no, that's so much opportunity. You sort of got like your, your characters, your first sergeant and you know, second lieutenant or whatever. It definitely opens the door and uh, you can sort of see I use heaps of different parts now. So uh, this is Blooded Kill Team with uh, a sniper rifle from Death Corps of Krieg. I started using some gas masks from Death Corps. We've got the grenade launcher here and a gas mask. So every single model is bespoke and unique, which means they take a long time to make and paint. <laughs> um, so that's why progress is really slow. I don't batch paint. I don't really contrast paint. I like to just spend ages converting it, umming and ahhing a lot. Um, and then we also have here some more models. These are the first examples of models that don't have gas masks. So I decided that that would be kind of impossible to maintain. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead what I've done is I've realized that in the new rules, you can feel like Death Corps of Krieg squads, in Arcadian squads, all the gas masks are now Death Corps because that makes sense. For, it's easy to mm -hmm. tell. And then all the non-gas mask models are not Death Corps. And I did this because a lot of the pre-posed and really nice models like from Blackstone Fortress, from the blooded kill team, some of the best heads, they're all, they don't have gas masks. There's not that many gas masks in the range. So if you want nice dudes who are just stabbing, there's just so many cool poses you can do by combining these kits. He's got this sword, like he's got his blade held up in the air. He's got his gun held loosely. I just look at them all and it kind of inspires me to make narrative models with the equipment. Like this guy, this dude, love it. He's just running, he's got a knife. And that's it. When I remember collecting Warhammer, Warhammer was just a dozen guys standing there holding a rifle. And with, mm -hmm. with combining and kit bashing three or four different squads as well as old Forge World Pits, I just get to make an army that has every single model is sort of doing something, telling a story. This medic who is just festooned with needle syringes, extracting some vial, like it's from the Death Core kit, that particular medic part. And then he's got the medic helmet, but in Trader Guard, it just has this really dark flavoring. Like, what is that? Is that just like <laughs> mega stimulant that he's going to inject in a guy and like make him go crazy? It's pure sugar. 
uh, Skatari head on this sniper. Like there's so many pieces and every model, you can look at them and you kind of get who they are. That was a roundabout way of saying, that's why I love Trader Guard and that's why I'm really enjoying doing them. Next up though, so this is kind of, this is a combat patrol plus some bits and bobs. I wanna paint the, the Renegade Psychers, I wanna paint up these squads, but I have a dream project mm -hmm. that is really dumb. <laughs> okay. And, and I've talked to you about it before. I don't know if I'm ready to do it, so it might be a few projects on, but if anyone's played Fallout, there is a little town called Little Lamplight, which is full of all the kids that get sent to this town, and McCready has a helmet on, he leads the town. So inspired by my Warfen, I wanted to make like a tank girl meets little lamplight Rogel Dawn. So the idea is it would have like no, no grown ups allowed spray painted on the side of it. And it would just be this mess of like sort of 80s comic book pulp and punk with like, you know, laundry hanging up on a rack and like a pig on a spit on the back of it. And like all these people all like, like just this little rat town tank. Yeah. Covered in all these like warfens. Yeah. It's it's the Lost Boys hideout from Peter Pan, but it is yes. a tank. <laughs> yes, it, and it's a tank, and that's that's what I wanted to make. Uh, that's one project I really want to do. But the other parts of the army that I want to do is um, expanding some elite infantry. So there's Cassacan, hmm. and I love the idea of using the new uh, Solar Auxilia Vexala because they've got that heavy plate, and you yep. can paint that looking regal and beautiful, or I could paint that looking gritty and like rusted and awful and put some spikes on them. So I'm thinking of doing a Scott of Kazakhan uh, kit bashed with the the elite. Uh, are they called the Vet Ventari or Vexari or something? Yeah, the the Valetians. They're, they're very <laughs> Elysian. So that's what I think's coming next. Uh, basically, a big tank in the Rogal Dawn uh, or some elite infantry for the Veterinary. Army. Veterinary. There so you go. So it's like veteran. veteran. There we go. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where my Trader Guard are at. I would love to hear what you like about the Trader Guard. It was great to hear from people at the convention. Uh, and I'd also love to hear what you think I should do next and what your favorite model is that we showed off today. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of showing off models, I want to talk about uh, maybe some models falling off. <laughs> Being not shown off ever again. Yeah, so uh, Age of Sigma has just announced a whole lot of models and even some sub-factions that are just going away. And uh, that's really interesting to me, as a lot of them are actually quite recent models. <laughs> yes. I think this is such an interesting topic. It's been talked about by a lot of people. It's really upsetting, uh, obviously, for people who are losing their armies. Beasts of Chaos is like a shock to me that they're going... Yeah. Bone, bone Splitters is not a shock, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, well, uh, the, the Beastmen in particular, uh, one of the characters came out last year. Yeah. I think one of the reasons it's worth talking about that in this video is there's a real uh, sort of connection spiritually between what's happening to Beasts of Chaos and what's happened to Traitor Guard. Uh, there is this through line of like being drip fed excitement that never eventuates into what you hope. So you're always on the fence of like, can I collect this army? Like, can mm. And I feel like Beasts of Chaos have been like getting a brand new model. It's kind of like when Blackstone Fortress came out or when a kill team comes out and you're like, surely Trader Guard's coming out. We just got blooded kill team. Yeah, you get, but, that, you get that taste. Yeah. And you're like, oh, the good stuff's coming. And the worst part is, is that like, you could build an army on good faith with that. And then next edition, 11th edition, they might just go, yeah, nah, blooded kill team, uh, the beastmen from all of that, from Chaos Space Marines, gone. We're just not supporting it for Chaos anymore. So, and there's no Trader Guard. Yeah. So, and that's what's happened to Beast of Chaos, right? Like they've collected an army that was like a stub uh, from, a, from Warhammer Old, what's it called? Empire game. Fantasy. fantasy battles! <laughs> they basically were inherited their existence from Warhammer Fantasy Battles, got like drippings of releases, very little, and then gone. Yeah, well I have a little bit of a theory, and we'll, we'll see how that plays out. So a lot of these armies got, you know, as you said, basically moved from Fantasy to Sigma. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of them saw complete sort of uh, ideological shifts, like you got Daughters of Cain, something actually sort of became of those factions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a possibility that something might happen for Beastmen, perhaps they'll sort of consolidate everything, like no more Ungor, Gore and uh, Bestigor, because mm -hmm. uh, all Gors are Bestigors. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some sort of like unified thing and they'll get their own identity. Possibly, we'll see. But even like the Slaves of to Darkness, especially all the Warcry stuff, th this is all a little bit weird because some things are just not being supported for Sigma. They'll get Legends rules, but it's just sort of like, they'll just be for fantasy or for actually for Warcry. And I think it's a bit of a lost opportunity because I love the Chaos Warcry units. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one with the Warcry ones because it's a gift that they even got Age of Sigma rules, mm. really. They don't really fit in an army, but they, they do. What I think could be a really good solution uh, that Games Workshop won't do because they don't do this kind of like fan positive rules writing anymore would be instead of saying all of the Warcry War bands no longer exist, making a war scroll that gets permanent support or maybe two in the vein of the old like uh, orc vehicles. Mm. So what you do is you'd say like, like mortal worshiper war band pick one of these three rules that best represents your group. Hmm. And then you can, and it's like 10 models. And then you can, if you want a Zinch themed army and you want to use Cypher Lords, you just take the like, the, the single data yeah. scroll that just represents that. And then any army can use any of their Warcry Warbands as that unit. If they, cause the counterpoint is you can't have like these books that end up getting like 30 Warcry Warbands just added on to Slaves of Darkness. It doesn't yeah. really work. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think at the moment it's sort of what you could do is, as you said, sort of have that one War Scroll to like uh, make your own sort of like character or something. And you could like theme the rest of your force around. You could have the, the Venom obsessed uh, snake people mm. uh, and then sort of decorate like each of the Warcry models becomes like a sergeant in a squad or something. You could sort of flavor it like that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little bit a little bit interesting. It's also interesting to think about uh, the way these are being removed because there's a lot of backlash due to the fact they've announced that I feel like historically Games Workshop just just like stopped supporting things. They didn't ever sort of say, "Hey, you've got two years to enjoy this." Hmm. Um, they just sort of said like, "It never got a new battalion." Like, I remember when armies got removed from the game, because it did happen, yeah. like, in the early days, and you just, it was just gone. Like, Lost in the Damned, it was just like, bye. They didn't say, you know, you can't use this. It just, the rules became incompatible with the game, and then they didn't release an FAQ. Yeah, Lost in the Damned. Um, Demon Hunters, the Inquisitorial squads, and all yeah. those things, they're just sort of, bye-bye. bye. I, I did... Here's Grey Knights, have this instead. <laughs> And Stormcast Eternals is super awkward. They've lost most of their first release, but some of the worst models from the first release are still around. They're clearly going to get all upgraded to the new armor. Yeah, like, they've been finding their identity, I think, yeah. and they're sort of finding their flow. But it's so much of a new army that, like, Sacrosanct Chamber is only six years old. Mm. And people's entire Sacrosanct armies have just been negated, and they're only six years old. What I'm saying is I think this is a very unique situation. I don't think it's going to be repeated very often, but maybe it wasn't the right way to do it so soon. Like if they'd waited a whole nother edition to remove Sacrosanct Chamber, I think it would have not stung as much if they'd had nine years plus the extra two or whatever. Hmm. But six years, some of those models, are, like Aventus, but like on, the guy on the Toralon, the, some of these models are gorgeous and they're just gone. Some of them are not, and they can be replaced. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. We'll, we'll see what they'll do. Like, hey, hey they're, they're going to show off plenty more, so we'll see. Overall, I think they should have supported the rules for longer. I think if they'd said this edition and then Legends, it would have been more palatable again. Uh, and it would be nice if we knew what was happening with Beastmen. I, I personally uh, think that Beastmen in Age of Sigma, I kind of get them not fitting because I feel like they're in their heart, they're a destruction faction, not a chaos faction. In Age of Sigma, in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, they're chaos beastmen. Hmm. In Age of Sigma, they've got like Kragnos, the great Minotaur God. They have so many ways that beastmen could be an awesome destruction faction that would make destruction not just green. Yeah. But the models all have, uh, have chaos stuff on them and they're all, all uh, I don't know. I hope beastmen get to exist in Age of Sigma. Absolutely, same. Like some of them are some of my favorite models. 
Uh, one of the factions that got removed that makes sense is the Skaven, because we, we, we knew that was coming. They're getting their new stuff, and I want to talk about the new models that just got shown off. Ooh. These ratties look amazing. This is like when all the um, death rattle skeletons, they all got their, their cursed city models, this mm -hmm. sort of like pop into HD. So, oh my gosh, it's it's beautiful. And they, they've only shown off the, um, the clan rats so far, but they look amazing. And the new Liberators for Stormcast. I'm a Stormcast yeah, yeah. player. I, I, and I'm someone with an entire box of second edition Stormcast, mm -hmm. by the way. Same, I, mine's all still in the sprue. I've actually yeah. stolen some of the, the little crests and things <laughs> for my Space Marines. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm a fan of moving to Thunderstrike, but in much the same way as the Skaven, even though the models are not as old, it just looks like everything's been refined and the new clan rats look really good. Uh, they they look high detail, high definition, but they also look more at place next to things like the Cruel Boys and the New Liberators. But I do think the New Liberators, their hammers look kind of comically big. Yeah. Because uh, the hammers were kind of made and designed to fit the Liberators, the chunky, mar the chunky Marines. <laughs> uh, not, not the, at least they don't look like Sig Marines anymore, but uh, they, they definitely look like they were built to fit the older models. And then I see the new ones with the hammers and from some of the angles I'm like that is a big hammer it's like a suitcase on the end of a little yeah. handle <laughs> yeah that'd be a big wind up to hit someone with that but the clan rats they they look like rats skaven aren't my thing they're like tyranids for me it's the faction I love that it exists so I can kill it yeah um, but I do think they look very nice yeah I think skaven hold a very special place in a lot of people's hearts because they can be that absolute bonkers sort of Evil genius, but also silly. It's it's sort of like a Saturday cartoon villain. Yes, we love them. <laughs> so that's really exciting, and I am very hyped to see what else is coming. So if you're hyped to see what else is coming, stay tuned and and watch next week. Wait, watch next week? What do you mean? Well, I thought it was about time we mentioned something. You might have noticed this video has been a little bit uh, different, a mm. little bit weird. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. So we've been talking a lot and going to Adepticon and talking to other creators helped solidify some feelings we've already been having. We want to be able to share our hobby feelings, our hobby journey, the hobby we do at home, the things we're excited for, all of this stuff with you in a way more direct way. YouTube is becoming increasingly competitive and it's really difficult to create two high quality videos of us making hobby projects every single week. It is a crazy amount of work and we really wanna make sure we're doing that awesomely. So that means our Saturday videos, we can spend a whole bunch of time diving into even better, higher quality projects than we've already been doing while we get to share more of a community focused and share show and tell focused video on the midweek. Yeah, we're, we're sort of gonna go through like they have us done now, sort of our armies, our histories, because people have always told us that they really like to hear that sort of things, that what we've done before, and we'll bring them in. Anything where we get to talk about our personal hobby journey, what got us here, also a little bit about who we are, uh, sharing your enthusiasm, but also it's going to be a great place to talk about like all of the big stuff happening. So sometimes we get a new release and we'll do a weekend video like when we did Cities of Sigma. That video did really well and was really big because it was a big announcement. This is kind of a video that that would fit in in our midweek slot. And also it doesn't mean that we will never do painting in these videos. Sometimes it will be a, a talk through or a showcase of how we've painted models. It's just gonna be a little bit more intimate, a little bit more personal. Yeah, a bit more, a bit more chatty. Uh, the mini review people in our Patreon will be aware that uh, we can often start talking about uh, new things that come out because that's a lot of the questions. You can, you can ask us questions in the mini review. And we have to hold back a little bit because otherwise we were going on, on an hour tangent on something that's just been released. So this is the chance to share that a little bit and actually find a platform for it perhaps. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we've seen our analytics and uh, if you are in our most watched other channel, if you're a fan of what Jay does over on Eons of Battle like we are, uh, we were actually talking to Jay and he basically said, uh, you should consider doing a talking video. So we're taking that advice, we're gonna give it a try. If you all hate it, we will stop doing it, but, uh, and we won't ramble about what we're doing as much. This is the first one we're doing. So uh, we really hope you enjoy it. The format is flexible. Uh, so let us know in the comments really what you think of this. If you enjoy the idea of listening to basically a more in-depth 
sort of half news, half podcast, half whatever we're thinking about video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. be sort of spur at the moment. We can talk about things as they pop up, but also things that we wanted to talk about for a while. Yeah. Which I think this is exciting. And community involvement. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Thank you to our patrons for supporting us and helping us make these videos. We've got some cool stuff we're going to be talking about uh, as we plan out what these videos are going to look like going forward. Uh, which uh, we're thinking will include like community uh, painting showcase where we sort of show off someone's mini every week. Uh, but yeah, uh, let us know. That it? I think so. We can, we, we, we stop talking now? Yeah, we didn't like plan the end of the video. We planned everything else. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Dang. <laughs> oh, well, uh, hello. Welcome back, awkward outros. <laughs>